well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. On today's Smart 7, vaping has all gone up in smoke. Putin only has eyes for Trump and lots more. It's Wednesday the 13th of September. It's Positive Thinking Day and happy birthday, Stella McCartney. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. The government is set to ban disposable vapes. Millions of them are thrown away every week, more than four times more than in 2022. And there's growing concern that the devices are targeted at children. Disposable vapes are often sold in bright colours and with flavours such as bubblegum or jelly babies. And there are concerns about the long-term health impacts, which are currently unknown. Technology Secretary Michelle Donnellan says it's time for action on the issue. This is a very worrying trend that we're seeing of young children taking up vaping that had never smoked before, obviously. And as a government, what we're trying to do is recognise what are the key challenges and grip them. Deputy Labour leader Angela Rayner is a well-known vapor. She took it up after quitting smoking and she was speaking on Tuesday at the TUC annual conference. She says Labour called for a ban on child-targeted vapes quite some time ago. We brought proposals forward to end these flavours and vapes that are clearly targeted towards children and young people and the government voted it down. They wouldn't accept it. So to be quite honest, their actions have been failing so far. There's also a serious environmental concern around the lithium batteries used in vapes and Dr Caroline Johnson, a consultant paediatrician and Conservative MP, has been campaigning for a ban on disposable vapes. Well, I think there are two main concerns. One is the attractiveness to children and young people. The second uh, issue is the environmental hazard that they produce. A material focus estimate that now five million of these devices are being disposed of every week. Things are going from bad to worse for the NHS. It's not just falling behind on patient care, but even the welfare of its own employees has been brought into question. In what has been hailed as the Me Too movement for the surgery profession, a new survey published in the British Journal of Surgery reported 11 instances of rape. It also found that almost a third of female surgeons say they have been sexually assaulted, with similar numbers reporting unwanted physical advances or uninvited comments about their bodies. One surgeon, Judith, described her experience. I was assisting a consultant on a case I guess he'd got a bit sweaty but turned round and just buried his head right into my breasts and I realized he was wiping his brow on me so I said excuse me do you want me to get you a towel and he said no this is much more fun overall 90 percent of female surgeons and 81 percent of males said they'd witnessed sexual misconduct at work in the past five years and Tim Mitchell president of the Royal College of Surgeons says action will need to be taken this report indicates that there's still a lot of work to be done we have to ensure that surgery is a safe and welcoming place for everybody to work in Donald Trump's fan club were out in full force on Tuesday as North Korean leader Kim Jong-un headed by train to Russia to meet with Vladimir Putin in the city of Vladivostok. Speaking at the Eastern Economic Forum, President Putin wanted to make sure he wasn't outdone and made a point of praising the former US president. It shows the rottenness of the American political system, which cannot pretend to teach others about democracy. Everything that is happening with Trump is the persecution of a political rival for political reasons. Putin also spoke out on Elon Musk, the Olympics, and criticised Britain's assistance for Ukraine in advance of his meeting with Kim Jong-un, where it's believed they'll discuss an arms deal for Russia. General Lord Dannant says the situation is complex and China's role shouldn't be underestimated. China's quite a player in all this. It's always been China who has always given the impression that if North Korea gets too far out of line, China will put its hand on on North Korea's shoulder. And the same, I think, is happening in the relationship between Russia and China. Four. 
U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is under increasing pressure as he approaches a series of major political moments for his leadership. He's facing a government shutdown unless he can agree a spending bill with extremist members of the Republican Party threatening to derail all proceedings if action isn't taken against Joe Biden and his son Hunter. It appears they're doing the bidding of twice impeached and 91 times indicted former President Trump. So on Tuesday, Speaker McCarthy announced an impeachment inquiry would be opened into President Biden despite no significant evidence of wrongdoing. Today, I am directing our House committee to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. Welcome back. Tuesday saw Scotland host England in Hampden Park in a friendly game to mark 150 years of Scottish football. It was the 115th game between the two sides and England went all out to ruin the celebrations. The game finished 3-1 with England's international stars on the score sheet with goals from Phil Foden, Real Madrid's Jude Bellingham and Bayern Munich's Harry Kane. Scotland's only goal came from, well, Harry Maguire as the England defender scored an own goal. But manager Steve Clark is confident that his side will bounce back. I told the lads the camp has been a success. It would be nice to have a positive result against England to make it even better. But the objective of what we came in to do has, has been done. Obviously, we didn't want to lose to our old enemy. But on the night, England were better. So sometimes you have to take your medicine in football. And tonight, we'll take our medicine and we'll try and improve. She's no stranger to fame and fortune, having kick-started her career at the tender age of nine. But Millie Bobby Brown has made a bit of a career change. The actress, probably best known for her role in Netflix's hit drama Stranger Things, has just published her first novel. It's a romantic story based in London during the Second World War, and she popped up on Lorraine's show to tell the story behind the story. My nan, uh, she told me these stories when I couldn't sleep at night, and... uh, I think for a while, and maybe until I was eight, I didn't think they were real. And then (laughs) I slowly realised that these were things that happened to her uh, in her childhood during World War II. It's good and bad news as Netflix finally drops the trailer for season four of Sex Education. It's a bittersweet moment as the new season will also be the last. Judging by the trailer, we're in for an emotional final season with the show's stars getting ready for a spectacular climax. Asa Butterfield, Shruti Gatwa and Emma Mackey are all back along with Gillian Anderson and special guest star Schitt's Creek's Dan Levy. The new season streams on the 21st of September. People are doing all these new things and... Sometimes I feel like I'm getting left behind. And I don't know that you're coming back. I want us to be friends. I want to know who you are. I want to hear your voice. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world.